So I had a question from a reader the other day about shutter speed and could I explain that in a little bit more detail? And I thought, sure. I've talked a lot about aperture, but I haven't given a lot of talk or thought to shutter speed. And I think that approaches often my type of photography. When I approach a scene or an image I'm about to make, my first thought is aperture. Uh, what depth of field do I want for this? Is it something scenic, very large depth of field, or is it a type of portrait where I really want to separate the subject from the background, a shallow depth of field, or do I need lots of light and so, um, and I don't care about my depth of field, then you know, a nice wide aperture works there as well. And then from that decision, I then decide on what shutter speed should I, I be shooting at here. And there are some constraints. The first one is your shutter speed focal length rule. Generally, when you're taking a picture, your shutter speed should be more, higher than your focal length. So if I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter prime on here right now, my shutter speed should be above 1 50th of a second. Below that, and there is a chance that you'll get some blur from handshake. Now, on a crop sensor, you have to remember to multiply times your crop factor. It's 1.6 or 1.7, depending on whether or not you're shooting with Nikon or Canon. Is that right, or is it 1.5 or 1.6? Anyway, let's round up for two to two as a safety factor, and then we'll kind of bring it back down. And I do have another video that talks about this uh, shutter speed rule in a little bit more detail, shutter speed focal length rule. Um, but let's say, so 100, one one hundredth of a second. Now, one of the things that you can do is, is kind of get an idea, is take some pictures on your own, um, and then very carefully look at them after the fact at each of the shutter speeds above the focal length rule, and then slowly go down it. And there are a lot of people that have very steady hands um, that can find that they can violate that rule by a little bit, a stop or two. There are some people that find that they have a lot of shake and that they need to make sure they're always above it. But keep in mind that just because you're still in one point, there may be another um, where you uh, run into an issue where your hands are shaking more than they more than you think that they are. And so you gotta watch out for that. If you have image stabilization built into the lens, I have the T5i over here with the 18 to 135 on it, and it has the stabilizer on the side. Usually that stabilizer allows about three stops of stabilization. That means that if you're shooting at, let's say, a, a 50 millimeters, but we gotta multiply it by the crop factor. These numbers on here do not take into account the crop factor. You gotta multiply it roughly by two, that's one one hundredth of a second. And so if we go into our little menu here and we say, okay, one one hundredth of a second, I can shoot three stops lower. That's actually nine turns of the dial because each shutter speed is a third of a stop. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I should be able to shoot about one thirteenth of a second and still get sharp pictures. Again, it may vary for, for you. Oh, and your subject. That assumes that your subject isn't moving. So you have to keep that in mind and we'll show that towards the end of this video in a second. So, what is shutter speed though? So I just gave you how I approach a picture and whether I determine whether or not, you know, I get the shutter speed, as I said, I'm constrained somewhat by the focal length rule. If it's sitting on a tripod, you can completely throw that, uh, that rule out the window. Shutter speed basically is the length of time that the shutter inside the camera stays open for, measured in hundredths or tenths of a second or full seconds if you're taking very long exposures. If you're taking action pictures, a higher shutter speed is more likely to freeze the action and give you sharp, crisp images. If you shoot with a slower shutter speed, let's pretend that you have the steadiest hands in the world or it's on a tripod, slower shutter speeds, one, are gonna let more light in, two, are going to blur any kind of movement that's happening in the scene. That's because the person or the subject is moving during the time that that frame is open, and so they get partially captured in one place and partially captured in another, and that's how you get that blur. That can be a very cool image, and working with flash, you can do some really neat effects because you get that bright burst from the flash at some point during that exposure will more crisply freeze them there and you still have that kind of subtle ghosting effect. Really, really long exposures, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, allow you to capture uh, uh, the stars, uh, long trails of lights from cars moving down the road, sparklers, I've got a video about that as well. 
So there's really, shutter speed is very, very cool and allows you to do some really neat things. 95% of my photography though, I'm pretty much ignoring shutter speed other than to saying, am I fast enough to avoid my blur and avoid blur of any subjects I'm capturing? How fast does it need to be to capture moving subjects? It really depends on how fast they're moving. A person walking, 1 60th, 1 100th of a second, somewhere in there will likely capture them. What we're gonna do is let's go outside and I'll do some jumping jacks and uh, we'll look at different shutter speeds and how much is blurred. This is really just a beginning conversation about shutter speed. We can talk about it in more detail in future videos, um, but we'll... All right, so we're about to look at a series of pictures of me doing jumping jacks. Uh, not the best way to, sh to show the effects of shutter speed, but it certainly is a way. This very first one, we're shooting at 1 400th of a second and um, pretty crisp, uh, most of me, but out at the arms. You think about when you're doing jumping jacks, those outer bits of your arms are moving quite fast. Even there, we're seeing some blurring. So if we wanted me to be completely crisp, we really should have started up around 1 500th of a second, or maybe even 1 640th of a second. And one of the things that you should be aware of and be careful of is a quick look at the back of the LCD, and it did look like everything was sharp here, so we thought we were that was as high or as fast a shutter speed as we needed to go. Obviously, we should have gone a little bit higher. All right, next shot, we're at 1 250th of a second. You can see that a little bit more of my arm is blurred here. Really love the uh, look of the uh, baggy sweat shirt jumping around on me. Now we're at 1, six, one over 160th of a second. So again, still fairly sharp in the areas that aren't quite um, moving, but more of the arm, which is doing most of the moving, um, is starting to get blurry. Here, my face is still fairly sharp, but not quite. We're down to 125th of a second. Um, and so a lot of blur out there at that outer movement point. One over 100th of a second, not a whole lot different in the center than the 125th of a second. Uh, it really kind of depended on when it caught me in my movement, how much different parts were moving. Oh, this is a wonderful look. I'm getting a little tired here. 1 80th of a second. And again, um, you know, right at the apex of movement. So that's eh, not so great. Let's just move on. A 60th of a second, 1 60th of a second, getting kind of slow and a good bit of blurriness all over the upper body and down at the bottom as well. So getting slow, any type of movement really is gonna start to be blurred at this level of 1 60th of a second, only if somebody is really sitting still. 1 50th of a second, I think it's actually in some cases it's a little bit sharper, not a whole lot different, uh, again, depending on the movement there. One, what was this, another 1 50th of a second? Another 1 50th of a second as comparison. Uh, you can see that this really illustrates. So here's the same shutter speed doing a jumping jacks. I wasn't slowing down or stopping, um, but one just caught me just right and the other one caught me just wrong. So you can see a lot of variation within. 1 40th of a second, pretty soft. A little bit of a smile at 1. 25th of a second, I think I can see the end, but look at that long motion blur out at the edges. My hand has moved quite a bit through the frame to be caught there. 1 15th of a second, not a whole lot of difference in the hand. Face is unrecognizable. Oof, that's a rough look. 1 8th of a second, but my hands, again, they, they stayed just a little bit longer at the top of that apex of the jumping jack so they are caught just a little bit sharper. Lots of blur now. Head has moved to two positions. You can see the hands again hesitated at that top point a little bit but you can see a blur of a pink blur all the way down across those bricks. That is that point so a third of a second. One third of a second. And our last one that I shot was that full half a second a lot of blur there. So let's go back to wrap it up. What I hope to, um, you know, let, we, I'm not going to quite call this shutter speed a part one, but I certainly will come back and talk about shutter speed in more detail um, in the future. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about shutter speed, 
please just leave a comment down below or come over and find me on Facebook. Those are both great places to ask any questions you have. I hope that I can help you be a better photographer. I appreciate you watching and please subscribe. It's very powerful. Thank you.